the, the, the problem with the word conscious, consciousness, it means lots of different things. And when people use the word, they think they're talking about the same thing, but they're using it in different meanings. And um, what I'm interested in is looking at the mind and the body as one unified whole, which is one of the reasons I like the word mind-body. I don't even use the hyphen in it. Some people do. Uh, Charlie Tart talks about states of consciousness, and he means the mind and the body as a whole. But the word consciousness is so ambiguous that people think he's saying one thing, he's saying another thing. For example, in politics, uh, consciousness, like women's consciousness or proletarian consciousness, means the thoughts and feelings one has because of one's place in society. Um, in uh, religion, consciousness usually means level of spiritual development, like somebody has a higher level of consciousness, meaning they feel more spiritual or more a uh, stronger sense of sacredness. Um, in philosophy, it means self-reflection, like I think and I know I'm the thinker. So that's that's self-reflective consciousness. So a problem with consciousness conferences is people get together and they start talking and they think they're talking about this their own meaning of consciousness and they're talking about other, other things. So for mind for combined sense of mind plus body as a whole, okay, I use the word mind-body. Now other people may want to use consciousness for other, you know, their reasons, but I think in order to be clear that I'm talking about mind-body unity as an interacting whole, I, I like to use the word mind-body state rather than state of consciousness. So it's just a matter of trying to clarify that. Um, so that's why I like mind-body state. So the, so the main idea is that there are these different mind-body states. Part of human nature is the ability to produce these, and these aren't just some weird tangential things that humans do, but a major, major part of being a human is the ability to produce and use different mind-body states. So that's the, that's the way I look at it. And um, the second one is the idea of psychotechnologies, and those are the various techniques or skills for producing different mind-body states, drugs, meditation, yoga, exercise, sleeplessness, sensory overload, sensory deprivation, all those. And the third one is an idea called residence, and that's that everything we do takes place in one or another mind-body state. And when we move to one to one mind-body state from another, the abilities that are available to us change. Now, some are the same abilities and they get stronger. Um, athletes and performers know this when they're, quote, in the zone, okay? And you know when you're in the zone, you'll become one with the activity or one with the music, okay? And that's an example of a performance in a different mind-body state. And some um, abilities get weaker and stronger, like creative abilities. In fact, creativity is one of the things that I was first interested in psychology. In fifth grade, I wanted to be an inventor. So I asked my mother, how do you, how do you get to be an inventor? And that's the creativity question for a 10-year-old. She didn't know. So in college, I was interested in creativity. And I found it was often was associated with different mind-body states. So that was kind of a, a lead into it in that direction. 